All right, someone who does care is Sven. He is That's obviously right. not here today. He is out at a gym in Roseville talking about American Ninja Warrior. And Sven, oh. uh, maybe just nod your head if I'm right, because uh, I think we might have a surprise coming up. We want to let our viewers in on the secret. What are you doing? You're bouncing. Oh, now I hear. Bumbles. You know what? Bounce. I'm having fun out here this morning. <laughs> This is the one thing I can do. I can jump on a trampoline. So that's what I'm hitting up this morning. Uh, yeah, we are live at the uh, Five Star uh, Ninja Warrior Gym here in Roseville, and we've got uh, nice weather on the way. We're going to be talking more about that coming up here through the show, but uh, now I'm actually out of breath a little bit this morning. A couple of showers as you head out the door this morning, so grab an umbrella. Temperatures are going to be up into the mid-70s today, and then tomorrow brighter and warmer, so we'll get those uh, few spotty showers out of the way today. All right, Sven, thank you. Now let's get to our top story this morning. Minnesota was the target of dozens of Russian-backed Facebook ads during the 2016 election. And this morning, we are digging into the thousands of pages released by Democrats with the House Intelligence Committee. And we're getting a look at the Minnesota-centered stories meant to create divides in our communities. Dylan Wollenhouse joins us now. So Dylan, I think a lot of us saw these ads. What'd they look like? Yeah, so uh, a lot of them came across our Facebook feeds, as you mentioned, and we saw them. So the Russian-based uh, social media post tried to cause divides through issues like racism and using the stories like police shootings of Jamar Clark and Philando Castile right here in Minnesota. Discord and division targeted campaigns pushed and paid for by what Facebook says is a Russian research agency backed by that country's government. Our first look this morning shows at least a dozen ads targeted users in the Twin Cities and greater Minnesota. They used polarizing issues, but not political candidates, to divide the conversation. Here's an example. Kadra Mohammed, a Muslim hired as a St. Paul police officer. The ad meant to exploit divisions and spark conversations. Another is Philando Castile and Jamar Clark, both shot and killed by police, which sparked days of local protests. The ads targeted users who like Black Lives Matter or don't shoot. According to Facebook, it's estimated 80,000 ads may have reached 126 million people. It's not clear how heavy the hand was in Minnesota in creating division among polarizing issues, but a concerted effort to do so, no doubt. All right, so if you look at this through a political filter, you can say that Democrats kind of had a vested interest in showing that our election was tampered with, even indirectly, and they were the ones that released um, these uh, posts through the House Intelligence Committee. But when you take a step back and you look that they were doing this kind of um, under a false pretense, the Russian, you know, backed organization, that these conversations were sowing discord, certainly something I think that we can all be concerned about. Yeah, it seems like they had us pegged. These were mm -hmm. definitely divisive issues in our community. Yeah, no doubt. Dylan, yeah. thank you. Chris? In news headlines this morning, no apology from the White House over a comment about Senator John McCain. Last week, a staffer dismissed Senator McCain's opinion because she said, quote, he's dying anyway. The Arizona Republican is battling brain cancer. McCain's friend, Senator Lindsey Graham, in a TV interview yesterday, pushed for a White House apology. Survivors of mass shootings coming together. James Shaw Jr., who wrestled a gun from a Waffle House shooter in Tennessee last month, met with student survivors of Valentine's Day's Parkland School shooting. The students have been a voice, pushing for stricter gun control, while Shaw has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the families of those impacted by the Waffle House shooting. Police officers who died in the line of duty were honored in our nation's capital. That included YZ officer Bill Matthews. He was hit and killed by a driver while he was picking up debris on Highway 12 last fall. More than 300 officers' names were read last night. Expect more road closures this week. There will be overnight work in the eastbound lanes of I-94 between Mounds Boulevard in St. Paul and Century Avenue in Maplewood. Another project closing lanes on Highway 7 between 494 in Minnetonka and Louisiana Avenue in St. Louis Park. Chris, thank you, sir. 6.05 is your time, and it's time now for our digital dive. Well, have you seen Dave? He's blue, a little bit of green mixed in. He's got a lot of feathers. He's a peacock that's missing out of Annandale. He ran away from a Wright County hobby farm. He's only three years old, but apparently for peacocks, that's the age when they want to start mating. Unfortunately, there's no female peacocks on the farm. So his owners think that's why he ran away. He went to find a mate. They say if he does come back, they're going to get him a girlfriend so he doesn't run away again. If you've seen this peacock, if you've seen this man, 
We have information on how you can help the owners find him on our Care 11 Facebook page. Right now, we're going to head to Sven for the one thing you need to know about today's forecast. Hey, Sven. Hi. Yeah, the one thing you're going to need to know, you probably want to grab an umbrella, a few spotty showers out there later this morning, and then towards the evening. Pretty hit and miss, but just in case. And uh, we'll have a little less sunshine, too, because of that, but still in the mid-70s today, and then brighter and warmer the next few days. And one good thing to know too about the traffic is 94 is back open through Minneapolis. We'll continue to keep an eye on the rest of the roads coming up. Are you so? And now in other news, the world is waiting for a historic summit on North Korea, but the people in the North and the South, they're already reconnecting. The ping pong teams insisted they play United. Ping pong's a big deal there. Kim Jong-un, now he is a brutal dictator. No one likes him, but his poll numbers are actually up in the South. And South Korea even stopped blaring K-pop through loudspeakers at the border. Families separated for decades, they're hoping to reunite. At this point, no one really knows what's going to happen, but it sure seems like the people want peace. We'll see if their leaders listen. SNL cast members avoided politics unusual for them with this weekend's opening sketch. Instead, they let their moms weigh in. Yeah, you can see that's A.D. Bryant's mom right there. Keenan Thompson's mom was pretty funny, saying, I like the show except for all the political stuff. We get it. Colin Joe's mom asked why Alec Baldwin's Trump jokes were so mean. Who writes the stuff? Of course, it's Jost who writes that stuff, but he threw his fellow cast member Michael Che under the bus on that one. Some of those moms, they had pretty good comic timing there. And do you know any babies named Alexa? Probably not. And it might be because of this little device here on Amazon. Ever since they introduced the Echo smart speaker with the Alexa voice command, the popularity of that name has just plummeted. Two years, 33% fewer parents have picked that name for their daughters. Might be because they don't want the kids to get confused when everyone's bossing them around. Or maybe, as you guys pointed out earlier, it's because they don't want Alexa to get confused yeah. when they're bossing the kids around. Alexa would just barge in there and ask, you know, what needs to be done. But Alexa, that must be a younger person's name because I don't know anyone named Alexa. I don't know any Alexas either. There weren't either. that many before, were there really? Yeah. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. No more series, though. Not that we've ever heard Siri. They're done. And Cortana? Yeah, done. also well. Siri, Tom Cruise, and. Uh, there, is it She's Siri or Surrey? Surrey. Oh, that's Surrey. Surrey. Close. It's yeah. close. That's not yeah. real popular either. That's <laughs> what I know about the Hollywood lifestyle. I do know about road construction. It is kicking off in the Minneapolis metro area, but it's not only on the roads, it's also at MSP. We're going to take a look at the airport, what they're doing out there to improve the facilities and life for travelers. And also this morning, we are talking about the royal wedding. We have the perfect way to kick off the wedding week. Yeah, or as I learned, I should say yes. Sven and I, we got a lesson in etiquette that's coming up.